I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in Atlanta for REIT World 2014, the REIT annual convention for all things REIT. I'm joined by Scott Craig, Vice President and Portfolio Manager with Eaton Vance Management. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks. Now, you're also a CPA, and I wanted to ask, how does that background influence your investment process? Yeah, it's a timely question, and in light of recent events, it's something that I think is getting some increased attention. It's very easy to take accounting for granted and to assume everything is fine, but in light of recent news, I've been asking companies what sort of checks and balances they have in place to prevent the situation where one person or one or two people either intentionally or inadvertently incorrectly report their results. And so that's a conversation I'm having with companies really for the first time. I hope that's a conversation that's going on in the boardrooms at every one of the REITs that we're invested in. Now, in the past, you've expressed caution about how some REITs are managing their balance sheet. Is that still a concern that you have? It is still a concern. I think that REITs have done a great job in terms of a better term structure of their debt since the financial crisis. We say a lot less risk of a liquidity crisis than we did before. I think where they haven't done as good a job is keeping the leverage low. We continue to see leverage drift up a little bit. And I think very few REITs have sufficient dry powder to really be aggressive if we have a, a, another uh, crisis or disconnect of some sort. Um, I've been in the real estate business 25 years. We've had three 100-year floods in that 25 years. We had the real estate depression of the early 90s. We had the tech bust in 9-11. And then we had the financial crisis. And REITs with very strong balance sheets, if we had something like any of the, one of those happen again, would be well positioned to be really aggressive deploying capital, whether it's buying back shares, whether it's buying land, whether it's buying busted development deals. And we just don't see many REITs that have adequate dry powder to, to be really aggressive there. And what are you seeing happening regarding construction costs and how does that impact how you think about the value of existing assets? Yeah, I think construction costs is a really important question, I think both on the upside and the downside for real estate. And it's something I talk to real estate companies a lot about. On the upside, one of the greatest real estate opportunities you can ever see is the ability to buy assets at a big discount to replacement cost. We, we saw a good bit of that over the last couple of three years, and we see a lot less of that today. Uh, on the flip side of the coin, there are a couple of areas where construction costs can be a sign of some danger. The first is when assets are trading well above replacement cost, it can draw new supply. Fortunately, we see very little of that. You see a few isolated pockets. As an example, senior housing widely is trading above replacement cost, uh, urban limited service hotels, and trophy office building in the very best markets. Those are trading above replacement cost, but beyond that, there really isn't, isn't a whole lot. Uh, and the other area where construction costs can be an issue is if construction costs are well above the long-term inflation trend line, that can be a sign that there's overheating, whether it's excess land prices, whether it's uh, contractors that are taking too much profit. And Prolog just had a really nice slide in their recent investor day where they showed in the industrial business the long-term inflation trend and then where costs are today. Once again, I don't see any reason to be concerned there, but it is something that bears watching. Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for the opportunity. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.